Hey all, uh, I want to go through examples of the process I talked about last time, which is um, deciding if a series converges absolutely, converges conditionally, or diverges. Um, and there's a little typo, uh, which I will fix. So let's start with this example. In each case, I start with the example. There's a blank screen. I encourage you to stop the video work out the problem yourself, and then watch me do it and see how they compare. All right, so let's look at this one. Um, so notice, first of all, that it's positive. So there is no converges conditionally. Um, it is either going to converge absolutely or diverge. Um, so we go straight to, uh, well, first let's do the easy tests. Let's do the divergence test, the limit as n goes to infinity, square root of n squared plus 1 over n cubed plus 2. We're going to uh, simplify. Um, so n squared plus 1, n squared dominates. n cubed plus 2, n cubed dominates. So this becomes the square root of n squared, which is n, over n cubed that becomes the limit of 1 over n squared as n goes to infinity, which is 0. So the divergence test doesn't tell us anything. Um, so uh, now, we move, obviously, it is not a p-series or a geometric series. So we move on to, we either want to use the limit comparison test or the um, ratio test, if there's no exponentials or um, uh, factorials in it, then you're probably going to want to use the limit comparison test. In particular, because this is all n to powers, square roots, and things like that, if you did the ratio test, you just get 1. You get no information. So we go straight to limit comparison test. Happily, we have done the um, uh, we, by because we did the divergence test, we already know what the uh, simplified series is. It is going to be one over n squared. Let's check that that makes sense. So we'll take the limit. So this is our check. The limit as n goes to infinity of the original series n squared plus 1 over n cubed plus 2 divided by the simplified series 1 over n squared. We get n times the square root of n squared plus 1 over n cubed plus 2. When you bring, I'm sorry, n squared. When you bring the n squared inside the square root, it becomes an n to the fourth. So we get n to the 6 plus n to the 4th over n cubed plus 2. Once again, at this point, you throw away lower order terms. n to the 4th is lower than n to the 6. 2 is lower than n cubed. Um, this becomes the limit as n goes to infinity, square root of n to the 6th over n cubed. Square root of n to the 6th is n cubed. That's 1 and check. Okay, then um, uh, now we just have to check um, what 1 over n squared is. n appears in the base, and a constant appears in the exponent. That means it's a p-series. This is a p-series. p equals 2. That's greater than 1. So this converges. So by LCT, the original series, which hopefully I'll remember, converges absolutely. Next problem. Take a moment, solve this, and then restart the video. 
Here, we do have um, negative signs. In particular, negative 3 to the k is equal to negative 1 to the k times 3 to the k. So this is an alternating series. So the question of whether it's convergent absolutely or conditionally convergent is relevant. Um, so we're going to look at the positive version. Uh, we can look at the divergence theorem limit k goes to infinity, 3 to the k, k minus 1 to the fourth, over 2 to the k, k factorial. You can throw away lower order terms, but you don't really need to, because k factorial is growing faster than anything else. So this is equal to 0. Divergence test doesn't tell us anything. So that means we either want to do the limit comparison test, or the ratio test. Since we've got a factorial in there, limit comparison test is not going to help us. We're going to get a complicated mess in there, so we're going to do the ratio test. That's a big messy term. I'm going to write it out. On the bottom, we put minus 3 to the k, k minus 1 to the fourth, over 2 to the k, k factorial. And on the top, we put minus 3 to the k plus 1. Times k plus 1 minus 1 to the fourth, over 2 to the k plus 1, times k plus 1 factorial. And that k plus 1 should really have parentheses around it, though it doesn't matter in this case. I am going to do all in one, flip these guys over. Um, I am going to notice the absolute value is doesn't do anything except the absolute value of minus 3 to the k plus 1 becomes 3 to the k plus 1. Okay, so we get 2 to the k times k factorial times 3 to the k plus 1 times uh, k plus 1 minus 1 to the fourth. On the bottom, I'm going to put things with their friends. 2 to the k gets 2 to the k plus 1 next to it. k factorial gets k plus 1 factorial next to it. 3 to the k plus 1 gets 3 to the k next to it. And k to the fourth gets k minus 1 to the fourth. Okay, and now there was supposed to be a limit as k goes to 0 in there. k goes to infinity, sorry, I said 0. Okay, let's take these one term at a time. Sorry about that. 2 to the k over 2 to the k plus 1 is just 1 over 2 to the k. 1, one over 2. k factorial over k plus 1 factorial becomes 1 over k plus 1 by the recursive factorial trick. 3 to the k plus 1 over 3 to the k just becomes 3. And finally, k to the fourth over k minus 1 to the fourth, we throw away lower order terms, it becomes k to the fourth over k to the fourth, which just becomes 1. So this whole thing turns into limit, k goes to infinity, 3 over 2k plus 1, which goes to 0. The ratio test says that if this is less than 1, then the original series converges absolutely.
Next prop, 2 to the k over We see here the minus one to the n, n plus one makes it alternating. So it is uh, relevant, um, whether it's absolutely or conditionally convergent. But as always, let's start with the divergence the test. We're gonna take the limit as m goes to infinity, minus one to the m plus one. Um, Except we don't need that, right? We can we can just take the absolute value, and that makes our life a little easier. m factorial over 2 to the m. m factorial grows faster than 2 to the m. This is uh, diverges, and so the original series diverges. That's it. If you had failed to take the divergence test, no, no worries. You would have then looked at the absolute value. The absolute value um, would have been m factorial over 2 to the m. You would have recognized that was a ratio test situation. You would have done the ratio test and found that the limit went to m plus 1 over 2, right? The m factorial. I hope you're getting used enough to the that the m factorial will give you an m plus 1 in the ratio test limit, and the 2 to the m will give you a 2 in the denominator. That limit is infinity, so the series diverges, and you then have to check the alternating series test, which would really just be the divergence test, to see that the alternating series ratio test that you will see diverges as well. OK, here's a scary looking one. The um, Uh, we see, of course, that it's an alternating series. Um, that's actually not quite true. The um, This part is not always positive. The very first term is negative when you plug in k equals 0 because of the k minus 1. After that, it's positive. As always with these tests, it is sufficient if it is eventually true. After k equals 0, every zero well, after k equals 1, since it's 0 when k equals 1, every single term is positive times minus 1 to the k, so it becomes alternating. It is eventually alternating. Um, so first, we're going to do the divergence test. We drop lower order terms, best done without um, simplifying, without multiplying out. Sorry about that. k minus 1, when k is large, might as well be k. k plus 1 cubed might as well be k. k squared, k cubed plus k squared plus 1 becomes k cubed. And this whole thing becomes k for the first term, k cubed for the second term. Don't forget the cubed out front k squared on the bottom, and k cubed, this is 1 over k, which approaches 0. Divergence test doesn't do any good, but you can see, having done the divergence test, you can see the simplified series is going to be 1 over k. Okay, And because that's a p-series, you know that the limit comparison test is going to work here. Um, as long as the limit comparison test gets you something you recognize, p-series or geometric series, it's going to work, and it's easier. Um, once again, because these are all powers of k everywhere, had you done the ratio test, you would have worked very hard to get no information. OK, so um, uh, we're going to look at the positive version. So right now, we're addressing absolute convergence. And we're going to use the limit comparison test, and the simplified series is 1 over k.
Well, of course, 1 over k doesn't make sense at k equals 0. But it's OK. We can start at k equals 1. The convergence doesn't care where you start. All right, let's do our check real quick. We put uh, incredibly complicated um, terms on the top and the incredibly simple terms on the bottom. I think we do an absolute value. I can't really remember. Um, and then we play the same old game. We write that as limit k goes to infinity, k times k minus 1, k plus 1 cubed. Now I'm remembering that no, we don't. Um, uh, we don't need the absolute values here. Clean everything up, throw away lower order terms, and when you count up the exponents, we get k times k times k cubed, k to the fifth on the top, k squared times k cubed is k to the fifth on the bottom. This equals 1, so we pass the test. That means that we just need to know what 1 over k does. 1 over k is a p-series with p equals 1. So it diverges because p is less than or equal to 1. Um, so original series is not absolutely convergent. Okay, it's either divergent or conditionally convergent. How do we tell? We use the alternating series test. Okay. Our series is eventually alternating. If you turn all those k's into x's and graph on Desmos, so your graphing calculator, here's what it looks like. You see it's negative, decreasing, then increasing, then it hits right at 2. If you were patient enough to take the derivative of that horrible expression, you would find that the biggest critical point is at 2. After that, the derivative is negative, so it's decreasing. So that means we can do the alternating series test, and that means all we need to decide is whether the limit of the terms, k minus 1, k plus 1, cubed over k squared plus 1, k cubed plus k plus 1, whether that goes to 0. And we've already pretty much, well, no, we already exactly did this, right? We did this in the virgin, divergence test. Um, so alternating series test tells us it converges. And because we know it doesn't converge absolutely, it converges conditionally. Last problem, 1 over n square root of ln. Um, it's positive, so it's only convergent or not convergent, nothing else. Uh, if we tried limit comparison test, we would simplify this. It's as simple as it gets. There's nothing to throw away. You're multiplying factors together. And I don't recognize that as a known series. Limit comparison test isn't going to help. Um, ratio test also doesn't help. I won't go through it, but in the same way that n's give you n's and square roots and things like that give you one, natural logs give you one as well. Um, so uh, it's too slow growth for the ratio test to be helpful. 
So we got to use one of our fancier tests. We could do comparison test, and that would um, uh, in that would actually be a tricky one to pull off. Um, uh, but easier is the integral test. The natural log uh, suggests the integral test because you know how to integrate with natural logs. And in fact, seeing one over x, which is the deriv derivative of ln of x, um, together in one expression really suggests you're going to be able to do this by substitution. So first we check um, 1 over x squared ln of x is positive, of course, because ln of x is positive as long as x is bigger than 1. And uh, it is decreasing um, if you uh, uh, if you sketch it, it is has a pull at x equals one, and from then on is decreasing. Okay, so we're good. So now we just have to do this integral. Substitution suggests that you either put some take something in the denominator in parentheses or in the square root. X in parentheses never makes never helpful to substitute x. Um, the denominator x ln of x, x square root of ln of x you could try u equals that, but its derivative is going to be a horrible mess. We are not seeing its derivative anywhere. I forgot to put the dx here. That's very important. We are not seeing its derivative anywhere, so x ln of x is not a likely one to work. On the other hand, u equals ln x looks helpful because we do see its derivative. Derivative of ln of x is 1 over x, so du is 1 over x dx, and we are happy campers because we see 1 over x dx there. So this becomes um, the integral of 1 over the square root of u times 1 over x dx is du. Okay. I am not putting the limits on. I could translate the limit limits, but I'm intimidated by plugging 2 and infinity into ln. So I'm just going to go through the whole thing and plug back. Um, this is u to the minus 1 half du. Add 1 to the exponent to get u to the 1 half. Divide by the exponent. Divide by 1 half to get 2. Um, and then translate back to square root of ln of x. Um, and now we can plug in 2 and infinity. 2 square root of ln of infinity minus 2 square root of 2 or ln of 2, sorry. This is some perfectly sensible number, but ln of infinity is infinity, square root of infinity is infinity, so this diverges. The integral diverges, therefore the series diverges by the integral test.